friends, welcome to Carrie's Culinary Crafts. And if you're new, welcome. I'm Carrie, and here on Carrie's Culinary Crafts, we talk all things food. And today I have another uh, week of what's for dinner that uh, we had this past week, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So let's get into it. Good morning, friends. Uh, for today's dinner, we are going to make a pesto chicken. And it is in the morning, so I want to kind of get this together and let it marinate all day in the refrigerator. And then we'll go ahead and cook it whenever it's close to dinner time. So for this recipe, we, I am using, you can use whatever you'd like, but I am using uh, bone-in skin-on chicken thighs. Now, if you want to use chicken breasts or if you want to use boneless, you know, you can do whatever you want. Um, it will just change the cooking time depending on what it is that you were using. Uh, pesto cubes here. Now, I preserved these last year. This is the last I have. I have seven cubes left. I made the pesto with the pine nuts and the Parmesan cheese and uh, just put them into these little molds and threw them in the freezer. So I have pesto all ready to go whenever I need it. So I am going to put uh, three of these cubes into a bowl here. Okay. And then I have these garlic confit cubes. Um, garlic confit, I did a, a video on making this one time. It was a um, like a procedure that you cook garlic in olive oil for a very long period of time until that garlic becomes all cooked and mushy and delicious and all that good stuff but I'm going to use a couple of these um, garlic confit cubes. And the seasonings that we're gonna need for the rub for the chicken is we will need pepper. I have here a garlic seasoned salt. You can use just salt and garlic pepper or garlic powder if you'd like but I have this homemade garlic seasoned salt. So I'm going to use that. I have some paprika here and I have some onion powder. Okay, so I am going to um, make a rub oh, with these ingredients that I can uh, put all over the chicken. Now, pepper, I'm going to want, I do have a lot of chicken. This is five pounds worth of chicken here. So I want to put in, oh, maybe a half a, half a teaspoon of pepper. Without breaking things. And I have no little spoon in there, so I need to get one. I got some new little spoons here. These are half teaspoon spoons, and I want one teaspoon of this garlic seasoned salt. So I'll put one teaspoon in there. And I want one teaspoon of paprika. And one teaspoon of onion powder. And you know what, I'm gonna do some Italian seasoning too. And I will put about one tablespoon of my Italian seasoning blend here. Okay. 
we'll give this a little stir. Okay, just to get those seasonings nice and mixed up. And this makes about a quarter of a cup of a dry rub here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open up my chicken. Okay, I'm going to take paper towel here and I'm going to dry off And you know what? All this time I thought it was, it had bone in, but it does not. It is boneless, skinless, is it? Yeah, never mind. I have boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Here, all this time I had the bone in. Okay, I'm going to spray my 13 by 9 inch pan here. Okay, then I'm going to pull out my boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and I'm going to dry them off with a paper towel, and I'm just going to throw them in my 13 by 9 inch pan. Okay. Okay, so I have some extra virgin olive oil here, and I am going to drizzle on the top of the thighs, and then I am going to add all of this rub mix that we have. Now it may seem like a lot, but trust the process because we're going to need to season both sides really, really good. Okay, so I seasoned the top. I'm going to give them a little mix, get that olive oil on all of them and get them flipped over. Okay. And then we're going to sprinkle the rest of this rub and give it another mix. Now I'm going to go ahead and stick this in the microwave to thaw it. If I would have thought about it last night, I would have taken these out of the freezer and put in the refrigerator so they would have thawed, but I didn't think, I didn't decide I was making this until this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and stick these in the microwave to get it good and thawed. Okay, so I put the pesto and the garlic confit in the microwave for 30 seconds. Then I pulled it out and stirred it. And any gar whole garlic cloves that I see in there, I'm just smashing it. It's super easy to smash. So I put it in for 30 seconds, took it out stirred it and then put it in for another 30 seconds. I don't want to cook the pesto. I want the pesto to still be cold because we're not ready to cook this yet. We're going to leave this in the refrigerator. So I'm just stirring, making sure we get rid of any 
clumps, any um, whole garlic cloves, and given a good stir. Okay, and now I am going to dump this pesto all over the chicken. Okay, now <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and mix this up because I want this pesto all over the chicken, both sides. Because we want that chick or that um, that pesto and garlic to really infuse in all of the chicken. And if you find any pieces of whole garlic, you just want to squish them up. Okay, I think I definitely did the perfect amount of garlic, or I mean pesto, because these. These chicken pieces are very nicely coated, so I won't need to thaw any more pesto. All right. And there is our garlic pesto chicken, and I am just going to cover this with some saran wrap and stick it into the refrigerator and I'm gonna leave it in there until it's almost time to cook. Um, I will pull it out of the refrigerator 30 to 45 minutes before I cook uh, because you want your chicken to be room temperature. Um, you don't wanna stick a cold pan, cold chicken directly into an, to the oven. So I will pull it out like 30 to 45 minutes before it's dinner time and we will let it sit out to get to room temperature before cooking. Okay, into the refrigerator it goes. Okay, and that's it for now. I'll see you a little bit later when we put our dinner together. Video.
delicious. A little bit more so. And keep this up a little bit just to keep it warm till the chicken's ready. Okay, while my son was on spring break, um, on this morning I decided to go ahead and make some waffles. Uh, and I decided to make some chocolate waffles because both of them like chocolate and it's been a very long time since I made them. So I'm just using my standard homemade pancake mix here. Um, and I added in some a little bit of my French vanilla creamer just because I had a little bit of it left so I just went ahead and added it into this batter and then that's when I decided I'm going to use make some chocolate waffles so I went ahead and grabbed some cocoa powder and added that in there really really well and I have my waffle iron over here, which makes four large waffles all at the same time. And I love this waffle maker because it has the removable trays that I can just throw them in the dishwasher as opposed to having to wash them by hand. So I'm just going to spray the trays really good. And then I'm going to scoop out my chocolate pancake waffle batter and put it on my waffle iron until it beeps to let me know that it's done and both of my boys were very happy to see chocolate waffles because like i said it's been a very long time since i've made them so they had uh chocolate waffles and then i made uh, a peanut butter sauce that they could put on top uh, my one saw so my one son just use the peanut butter sauce over the chocolate waffles and then my other son actually used the peanut butter sauce and some maple syrup and they turned out delicious according to them
Okay, for today's dinner, we are having some ribeye steaks. These are from Butcher Box, where I always get my beef from. And we're gonna have some roasted red vegetables, and I'm gonna use this butternut squash, which is from last fall. This I just can't grip anymore.
All right, so I'm making some roasted red or roasted vegetables. I've got butternut squash, I've got uh, potatoes, and I have some um, red bell peppers here, but I'm not gonna stick these in until these are almost done because these are gonna take a while, so I'll put these in first. And we love roasted vegetables and we just do the simplest seasonings. Salt. Pepper. And some Italian seasoning. And it's as simple as that. And we roast, roast them in the oven. Uh, usually with the potatoes and butternut squash, it takes about 30 minutes. So at 20 minutes, I will then put, add in the, uh, the red bell peppers and let them cook the last 10, 15 minutes in there with them. Okay, and that's it for the vegetables. And the next thing I have is I have some ribeye steaks. And what I'm gonna do with these is I'm going to season them and then I will sear them on the stove and then I will add them to the oven while the vegetables are cooking those last 10 to 15 minutes with these. And then basically everything will be done all together. So there are my ribeyes. So I'm going to salt. Well, this is pepper. I'm going to put pepper on them. Salt. And my homemade steak seasoning that I made not too long ago on my channel. If I remember, I'll leave a link up here if you want to make it. And I'm going to generously season with the steak seasoning. Okay, and that's it. So I'm gonna sear them on all the sides. Then that last 15 minutes, I'm gonna add it to the sheet pan and have them finish cooking in the oven. And I'll bring you back when it's time to do that.
Okay, friends, I hope you enjoyed that what's for dinner video. And if you did, remember, give me that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button down below. And I will see you on the next one. Bye, friends.